My Rituals, My World. This is a staging citizenship lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, at Estfold University College, which I would like my students to be able to watch before Thursday when we meet on the 11th of February 2021. So, My Rituals, My World. We need to understand how rituals work um, in our society, if we are going to understand that society and, and how robust it is and how unchanging it is, or whether we can actually change society and change the meanings that rituals put into place in the world. Um, traditionally, um, people who study rituals, and, and ritual theory really is an enormous field, and I can only give a, a little introduction to it in the context of this module because we'll be using it and changing it. We won't be taking the usual approach, but it is an enormous field. Um, and anyway, ritual studies do tend to um, um, define rituals according to their function or their content. Um, so we'll be looking a little bit at that um, in this in this video. Um, firstly, um, looking at their at their content, um, we tend to talk in an everyday basis about my little rituals, the little things I do in my everyday life, um, and um, like waking up, um, brushing my teeth, eating, going to bed, um, and 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 I have my rituals which involve making myself a cup of coffee and um, and trying to have enough patience to not shout at anyone that talks to me before I have that coffee. Now these are the rituals of my everyday life, but they are just things that I do every day and um, and it's difficult to say um, why we would want to call them ritualized behavior. Um, they are definitely very similar. I mean it, it genuinely is a repetition. I do do exactly the same um, when I sit down for example. And, um, and for some reason we, we seem to ritualize the things that are most animal about our behavior like like eating um, like sleeping um, and um, ritual um, theorists spend an inordinate amount of time discussing what the difference is between something which we just do an awful lot in exactly the same way which is to say um, which is to say extremely similar habits um, or, or or almost neurotically similar habits um, that I must do, that I must have this way of getting out of bed, for example. And we talk about how disastrous the day is when I haven't been able to have my morning ritual. Um, and um, and 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 the more developed, so we got habits like that, and the more developed. Um, rituals that we talk about, which are which don't seem especially natural at all. Um, uh, so, for example, why does why why is it a ritualized behavior that a um, that a newly married couple um, have to um, one of them has to carry the other one over the threshold of their of the house that they're typically moving into together. Uh, why is that ritualized? That doesn't seem a natural way of entering a house. Um, so we would maybe call um, ritual things that are illogical. Um, so that's, that doesn't seem right either. Some things seem to make a lot of sense. Some things don't make a lot of sense. The point is, we have rituals that resemble logical practice. We have rituals that resemble habits, and um, and there is a uh, and there is a discussion as to when we go from the one into the other. When are we? When is it legitimate to call something? A ritual. Now, the other thing that um, that we talk about is what rituals do, um, and and one of the things they do is they structure our social life. Um, they answer our ritual discussions answer some of the most important questions in life, like who am I? Well, I'm baptized into the name Andrew. Um, where am I? Um, where? Are, what? What borders am I crossing? What borders have I crossed? What time is it? Are, what season are we in? Do we have a, a liturgical, a religious season? Do we have a? Um, do we? Ha what relation do we have to where the sun is in the sky at the moment? And all of these things can be marked by and confirmed by um, and and described by ritual. We can say we are now moving from spring into summer, so let's do something to ritualize that. This is a, at the banal level. This is a way of making our communication better. Um, it's important that we all understand each other. Um, so, um, so let's just make sure that we communicate in a particularly effective way. We could say that ritual is like, like language on performance-enhancing drugs. Um, some people um, read 
um, read some ritual as just a way of talking um, but uh, some people read something more existential into it so this is um, when we when we ritualize something we do something more with our psyche the question who am I has to have some kind of deep meaning um, but there are also really important polit political and legal consequences to these rituals um, there are there are legal statuses that are marked for example marriage is essentially a, a, a legal document a legal contract and it's important to know when um, when these legal um, transformations have happened. So it's really important to know when law has been declared, because um, because when war has been declared, I mean, um, because that will then distinguish between um, the kind of slaughter that we call combat and the kind of slaughter that we call murder, um, with the legal consequences that those two definitions have. So. Um, there is so it's really difficult to identify features that might apply to all rituals and um, we can't say that all of them do this communication thing and we can't say that they're all logical and we can't say necessarily that they're all um, they're all repeated um, it would be um, um, it would perhaps be difficult to repeat um, all of our rituals for example yes um, maybe the waking up ritual might want to repeat repeat or maybe the let us sit down to eat who sits down first let us stand behind our chairs until somebody sits down so that we all sit down together or who marks when we are all allowed to start eating um, those things can be repeated but it would be morally problematic to repeat birth rituals uh, morally uh, maybe morally problematic to repeat marriage rituals and definitely problematic to repeat death rituals so um, so we need to talk a little bit about the specifics of what they do and um, and and some rituals include performatives so performatives is a good way of saying something about rituals without necessarily saying something about all rituals we usually uh, we very often have this form I hereby declare you man and wife or I hereby name you Boaty McBoatface or I hereby declare war um, and it's also true to say that rituals determine what it is possible to say like with performatives you can only have a certain way of saying things and many of our words um, have rituals as their frame of reference for example there is no meaning for man and wife or um, husband and wife outside the ritual of marriage it is a reference to having had having done a particular ritual um, and although sometimes we, we might want to stretch what it is possible to say, for example, I only have one wife, um, which we uh, which we would say in societies of which have monogamous um, um, culture. Um, how much we want to, we can't because there is that is just that ritual that we have. Um, so our rituals determine what we can say, and that we you can't just start a way of sense making um, just as like you start this year. I've got to have a new New Year's resolution. For example, I'm only going to eat this particular thing. You can say, oh, this year I'm only going to make sense in this way. No, there are social occasions, there are social formats, and we are hemmed in by these rituals. We have no other way of making sense than the meaning um, institutions, the language and the rituals that we are living in, that we inhabit, whether we like it or not. There's no other way of, um, of making sense of the words husband and wife apart from the marriage ritual, even though there are different marriage rituals. Marriage ritual is the essential reference of husband and wife. So. Rituals sometimes feel silly and um, sometimes they feel illogical uh, and the worlds they make feel less real perhaps now than they once did. For example, no one really cares what liturgical season we're in at the moment, um, but we do care, for example, if we're students and teachers, which semester we're in. The few um, rituals that were left to us, they're still really robust and they still make and change our channels of communication, so we can't just sign out of them. It's said that one way of making your brain develop is to get out of bed in a different way every morning. So our brains, the kind of brains that we are and the kind of brains that we have are also determined by our rituals and our habits. Um, so it's also tr true to say that the meanings we make, the words we tend to say and the connections we make um, determine what kind of brain. We can actually see physically in, in our brain the changes that, make, that take place when we know an awful lot and when we use particular channels of communication and thought. So we could also say that rituals do not only tell us who we are, they make us who we are.